I can't imagine my life without ASL. It has motivated me. It's provided language and communication, and there's nowhere I can't go. My name is Jeff Braven, and I am executive director here at the American School for the Deaf. I am deaf. My parents are deaf, my grandparents and my great-grandparents were also deaf on both sides, so that makes me fourth generation deaf. And that is very unusual. Here in America, about 95 to 97 percent of deaf children are born to hearing families. My name is Stephanie Bryant. This is my name sign. I am 18 years old. I'm a senior this year. I graduate this year, finally. My parents had no idea I was deaf. Until I was two, I was without language. But I do remember clearly the very first sign word I signed was sheep. I remember that clear as day. I was sitting at the table with my mom. I do have that very clear, distinct memory. I'm Sandra McClellan. I attended ASD when I was eight years old. And prior to that, I had absolutely no language, and I'll emphasize that again, no language. American Sign Language is a language in and of itself. It has its own syntax, grammar structure, hand shapes, motions that match the grammatical rules just like any other language would have. ASL is American Sign Language. This is our language for deaf and hard of hearing people. It is not the same as English. Let's say with English, you say, I am going to the store. Now in ASL, I would sign, store I go. So, so store me go. But we incorporate more facial expressions, and people sometimes think I'm angry at them. And I say, no, that's the way that we express ourselves. English, you have tone and the fluctuations in that. And this language is fluid and ever evolving even today. Just for example, when you think about the English language, there's new words, new terms that are added every year, and the same is true for our language. It is ever-changing. People have asked me about regional signs and the differences in each state, and related to hearing people speak about accents, depending if you are in the north or the south or the east or the west. There's so many different regional signs that are used. An example, in the south, the sign for show-off is this. But here in the north, this is the sign for show off. Nice job with your partner. Birth to eight years old is the critical age for language acquisition, and if you miss that period of time, the child may not be able to catch up at later ages. I was so lucky to have my parents who really were willing to learn signs so early. So it was easy for me to learn and access my education. And for a child of that age to be able to ask for something that they want, imagine not having a foundation of language that early to not be able to express yourself. ASL is so important to me. Without ASL, I would be nowhere. We absolutely do have culture. We have the language, we have the community, and it's different for deaf and hearing and people. We have ASL, we have our history. In terms of deaf culture, there are norms, there's history there, and in our history of our deaf community, it is rich. Stories of how things happened, how the deaf community developed, people that have impacted our lives. So there's different behaviors, norms, and practices that we have within our culture. We even have our own deaf jokes. We have our own deaf stories. We absolutely have our own things that we talk about every day, and that is just part of our community, our culture, because we have the shared experiences of the same kinds of pain and frustrations, and that helps us to have a culture all our own.
I think the misunderstanding that's very common. And about driving, they'll ask if we can drive, and I'll show them the keys to my car. They're always curious. Can deaf people drive? And then the word impaired? That implies, anyway, to me, that it's something that needs to be fixed, meaning that you need to be fixed, and I do not need to be fixed. I am deaf, so when they utilize that word, it's not something that I relate to. My identity is a person who is deaf. Many hearing people have the misconception that deaf people can't. We can do anything. The only thing that we don't have is hearing. My name is Wadfa Ali Shama. I am the principal, very, very proud principal of 47 American Sign Language and English Secondary School. What's special about us is we have uh, deaf and hearing students. Most of our hearing students, um, a lot of them have some familiarity with the deaf community. They might be a CODA, a child of a deaf adult. They might be a SOTA, sibling of a deaf adult. Um, or they're just interested in the language because they saw signing. It's about coming into the school and bridging that gap from the hearing world to the deaf world, giving them a way to communicate in both languages. Some of the classes are taught in ASL. Some of the classes are taught in English. Do I think it's important for deaf and hearing people to learn how to communicate? Absolutely. Everywhere. Everywhere. The assumption was, as a child, as being deaf or hard of hearing, whatever term you want to use, the family would learn sign language. That's an assumption. That's a beautiful reality, but not really. It's not actually what occurs. I'm here because I want to have a better communication with my brother. Um, he is fully deaf. It was something that I really wanted to learn since a young age, and as well as I'm hard of hearing. So not everyone who starts to work here signs. We do ASL classes for the staff. As an English teacher, I had to relearn grammar. I had to relearn sentence structure. But we're all learning and we're all trying. Today, we had three periods of voice-off. The goal is for everybody to be signing. So the voice-off classes helps our students struggle a little bit. And I think that's a good thing because now they understand what the deaf person is going through in the hearing world, right? There's a little bit of a struggle to be understood. I think that exposure will just help them as like a life skill, just to be a kinder, gentler person. I feel like this is a community that I wanted to be in, and it was hard for me to express myself in a school of a mainstream that has zero people of deaf culture. That's beautiful. Very nice. Well, in the future, I want to be an ASL interpreter. So I really want to look into colleges that have ASL interpreting majors because I just feel like there should be a lot more interpreters out there for people like my brother. Yeah. Every time I sign to him, like I see a smile on his face because I learn new sign like, like signs every day in the school made us a lot closer. I feel like I could keep a whole conversation with him. You never know what it's like to be deaf or hard of hearing. You won't. So the point, keep in mind, you never know what that person's experience has been. Keep an open mind and be open yourself. This is my, this is my home. This is what makes Every day coming to work such a joy. I come to work knowing that um, not making a difference, but I'm making a change, right? A change in the way we communicate, a change in the way we treat people. And making sure that's every single student, whether they're deaf, hard of hearing, 
hearing that they all have the same access, that they all have the same opportunities, that they have access every day to people who care about what happens to them tomorrow. That's what inspires me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.